Warren brought this truck in this morning and said he hit a grasshopper. He said it was that one. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Back in the field this morning. Did get quite a bit cut yesterday after we got back from my funeral. So Tim got back to trucking. I cut, and no one filmed anything. I don't think. So there you go. Cutting peas. Here's a little bit something that's interesting here. This spot in the field is bare, but there were peas there. Don't know what kind of wind hit that, but here's the peas. Turn around here and look at it again. It must have been some kind of gust of wind. Thought I wasn't standing there. Uh oh, I'm gonna have a traffic jam. It's like somebody's going faster. It's not fair, he's got less to cut. Feeds a lot better when you only have 10 feet. It's like he's leaving me in his dust. Well, I am on the last pass of our inoculant trial. Remember back to the spring, we did five different inoculant uh, brands, and uh, four of them were granular. One, two, three, yep. Four of them were granular. One of them was a peat-based. Um, Got all the totals written on the window so far. Tag Team and a Primo GT, I think is what it's called. I don't remember the brand name on that one. Are leading, basically tied within 20 pounds of each other on the 18 acre trial. Uh, we're 
weigh anything in the cart. One confidence guy that's all consistent. Should be pretty darn close to the best replicated trial we can do with a grain cart and all that kind of stuff. So I'm on the LaFix, Wallowman's LaFix right now. I just have this narrow, not quite a full width pass. Uh, we'll get to the end, add up the total weight of the cart, scale for the two loads out of the combine, go into the cart, which my header bounce over rocks over here, and uh, figure out which one is the king of yield. And speaking of rocks, it would appear that we need a heavier land roller to push our rocks in the ground. It's got one more up over here that I picked the header up. We'll have Nacho pick that one up. Hey Nacho, right next to my combine to the right here, there should be a uh, white rock that I picked my header up over the top of. You want to pick that up and take it off the field on the ladder of the tractor? Okay. You can take it home with you, put it in your suitcase, and take it back to Argentina. That one's free. All right, thanks. I don't think he thought that was very funny. I thought it was big overweight. Quick update at the bin site. All those are filled with peas. Full. And we're working on that guy right now. So, if this one kicks off, this will be the second full load going into this bin plus two three hundred bushel from another truck and uh, that wouldn't fit in that far west bin we're moving along and i put the first scratch in the new auger y'all on it got the truck a little close oh well next time i'll move out So if you remember from in the years past, we used this REAP scale app. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear it so I get down to zero pounds here and then we'll start on load. Oh look, now I found another big rock. Thirty nine eighty. Add that up, and boy, it is going to be really tight, almost exactly on the three premium inoculants here. There you go. All the top ones are within a few pounds. Now the crazy thing is, normally when we go into a pea crop, lentil crop, or chickpea crop, our nitrogen levels are super low. We've used up everything in the wheat crop previous. Well, last year, since it was really dry, we only cut like a five or six bushel average wheat crop off this field. We're not sure if the inoculant really needed to be there. You know, we kind of just wanted there in case it needed it for sure, but with the high levels of fertilizer still left in the ground, I don't know. I want to do this whole thing again next year and uh, see on uh, maybe some ground around home that we raised a pretty good hay crop off, like that hay barley or hay oats, and see how that all looks for, uh, for comparison next year. But we picked the top one, maybe by 20 pounds. That's a little fix that we used on the whole farm for peas and lentils this year, besides this trial. So there you go. Guess we're winning by 20 pounds. Good decision. Well, we're shutting down a little bit earlier than we normally do tonight. There, it's kind of wore out for the week. Saturday night. Had a good day at picking rocks, though. And uh, not a too bad day cutting peas, either. So, uh, yeah, those all came out of the header. And uh, heater chain, so clutch went. And I'm 
now we have quite a few fingers replacing the uh, auger, but we'll get done with peas and lentils and chickpeas before we mess with that. So yeah, we'll see you later. Well, good morning and welcome back. If you guys haven't been keeping up with harvest videos, shame on you. Just kidding. But uh, barley's done, oats is done, and we're about halfway through the peas. So we'll hopefully get those finished up way at the north farm here the next two days, and then we'll be back down here at the bins. And on this farm, getting uh, the rest of the peas that were hailed on cut off. They regrew, they were green. Had to stop cutting those and lentils and chickpeas before we get into the cereal crops. So here we go, let's head back to the combine and get fired up for the morning. Well, uh, Dad and Nacho got here before I did and they got headers greased and combines filled up and I gotta clean all the rocks off my feeder house that I dug out of my center auger. I don't really know what was going on. The rock roller just bounced over these, they're too big for the roller. Is our right way roller too light? I don't know. Okay, I gotta put you guys down. Well, those fingers on that center drum, there's four of them missing right there from the rocks. And I am glad that we've got those poly fingers from Mae West on the header, this header for sure. I don't know how Dad's is fair. I think he's got some missing too, but I'd sure rather have a chunk of plastic and fiberglass go through. I think they're fiberglass, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But I'd rather have that go through a combine than a metal one because uh, I think plastic will do a little less damage so all right time to go cut some more peas well good morning I, I'm back in my uh, outdoor shop truck won't start um, we had this problem last night in the field we were able to get it going trying to figure it out today I swapped that guy off of another truck to see if that was the problem uh, cleaned up the contacts on another one right there um, they were a little corroded but not bad but it still didn't do me any good so I'm gonna check the positive connections again make sure that they're clean off the battery post and hopefully get this running I'm thinking it's a starter and I really don't want to pull a starter off right now mostly because we don't have one so we'll get to it we'll get it figured out the further north we get, the better this field gets down here in this end. It's like some 50 bushel bees where there's been some sub moisture that kind of carry it through the heat spells. So that'll work. Just shows us how much that sub moisture really is important for keeping our crops growing. We can get by in some dry spells if we got sub moisture, but we don't have it. We should got to rely on every little sprinkle, every shower to carry us to harvest. We finished up the 1,000 acre field, well, almost 1,100 acre field, I guess, technically. And we're now on the last little bit here on this farm. We'll have to move about five miles to the next field here after this one's done. And that'll be it for all the peas up here on the north area that we farm. So, going good. Definitely not the yields we thought. We had a really good stand, just too much heat, and uh, just shut down the blossoms that never turned into pods on top of the plants so not a bad crop considering we've raised this on four inches of spring moisture zero sun moisture and then that little well it was a good rain in july might not have made much difference on it but maybe it did maybe it was only a 10 bushel crop before that but very thankful for the crop we got well not all the peas are super clean this year lots of thistle on this one pretty hard to control thistle in sandy ground and this is sandy ground so a little bit slower going because that green weed grinds through kind of hard. We'll make it through it. Another field done. 9:20. Do we set another one or do we go home now? I'm not sure. Back to cutting this morning. Dad is not around. He had to run a town and take care of some errands in town. So, we got 
Tim's running dad's combine, not just building trucks. Don't think this whole field's gonna fit in the four trucks and the cart, but it'll be close. And this is actually what we're gonna save for seed because there's way less grasshoppers in this than we have in the rest of the fields up here. Because we've got a lot less green weedy patches in this one than the last one, so that's the plan. Slow going. Another windy day, wanting to rip the plants out of the header. So, get a little slower and not push so much through there. One of these days, it might not be so windy. You can always dream, right? Time to move. I even found red Flintstone bike seat. Look at that. Does that look like a bike seat? Hey, Nacho. You know who Fred Flintstone is? No. What? He's a cartoon from like the Stone Ages and he like walks up or pedals everywhere the speed in his car. Oh yeah. I found his bike seat. <laughs> Not gonna thank you, Tarjantina. No, you take the Targentina now. No, yeah. Your suitcase won't be heavy enough, now it will. Now I have to walk over there. <laughs> Now he's passing me. I can't get mine into road mode because my unload auger doesn't fold right. Someone asked about that. Why are we making them pivot further? Well, that spot's really close to my header behind me. Dodge, you can go past me too. That is not too really close to the reel and my header when I pull it, so if it swings further, it's out of the way. So that's why. There's the old dump truck the neighbor bought from us. It looks pretty good. He got it washed up and looking nice. It's a little bit cloud. I should maybe just look through the camera. It's a, it's a lot clearer looking through this than through my windshield. Unload. Ah, uh, just about done. Well, 30 acres left on this 80, I suppose. And then we'll probably move combines over to the last half section of bees. Uh-oh. No, just kidding. The quad track's not broken. Just gotta go home and move the air drill for some warranty work. And uh, you know those walking beams, walking tandems that were sticking the spring during seating? They're coming to fix those. So we gotta take this home. 370 is going to the cart. Probably gonna stay there the rest of the year. We'll see how it goes. You have a good day at school now. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> learn something. Remember those Johnson harvesting guys that Colin helped last year and hauled winter wheat for us a couple years ago? Here they come, help us cut. Bring it at 9250, another 45 foot head. Oh, now we're gonna try, uh, there's an FT2 that we're gonna run. That's cool. Sweet, new MacDon header even. Can't really hear the horn on the tractor like the trucks, but we get the same effect. Well, I've got everything hooked up here, I think. Waiting for the monitor to load up here and uh, we'll get it into the yard and unfold it. Let's see if I remember how this all works. Let's see here. Back into my hydraulics. There we go. You know, maybe I'll go start seeding. That sounds like a lot more fun than combining. But I probably should pay some bills. We'll get to seeding winter wheat here eventually. Catch a good rain hopefully here in the next month and it's gonna be, I don't know how many acres yet, but is gonna come out and fix those, fix up everything on there warranty wise. I think that video got their attention with those being stuck, that wheel being stuck and I had to screw around for so long. I think they're a little worried they didn't like their air drill. I love their air drill. I just think there's some little things like that that could be fixed. So 
Let's go combine. Well, there's Johnson's combine, and Dad's over in the corner cutting out the end of the field. We also got, well, that's not 100% Johnson's combine. It's actually a test combine for Case IH with some new goodies coming in the future on that machine that I can't talk about. So, got an extra pickup out here for the Case crew. This is the last of the peas. These are hailed out, as you can tell. Not much fun cutting. Seven bushel the acre. And uh, a collection of things they found in the field are growing. My favorite yet, though, Max Scratcher. Oh, oh yeah, that's perfect. Well, we're in the lentils now. They're kind of disappointing, but kind of to be expected. All that darker brown out there is weeds. We should have stopped seeding when I uh, got into this field or done a little scouting first. This is new ground that we bought last year, and there's a weed that we can't control the lentils on it pretty bad, so it was green, it was so cold, we couldn't spray it. It's a winter annual that's like always there in the spring. Had we gone, yeah, we would have uh, come back and planted this later, or maybe just planted all the wheat, but I don't know. We're gonna we'll get a few truck ones out of all the lentils, I think, so it won't be such a loss. But. Could have done it a lot different, but we're already about 130, 150 acres in. That third combine really speeding stuff up, so we'll yeah, we should finish this field tonight and probably get ready to move to the next quarter of lentils in the morning. Or maybe we'll get there today, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's really nice here. Oh, desiccating with wide sprayer tracks. See that down there? Yeah, it works really good because it doesn't go all the way to the ground and we can pick it all pretty much back up. So, because I know I'm going to have some questions about that when that video comes out because, well, we're not there yet because we're way back to the videos. Anyways, see you later. Anyone care for some lentil soup? I'm gonna go home. Thanks for watching. Hold on, let me try this again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, farm hard, pray harder, and we'll see you next video.